Okay, today's gonna be a goodie. Um, I, I, I love having talks with dudes who I've seen come up in the game, dudes who I've seen really live the dream because we all, you know, have these aspirations to do better with our life, coming from nothing, coming from the environments we come from. Yeah. And um, so many of us dream about hitting the hitting it out the park. And I've watched this brother do his thing in the music industry, kill a game, live the American dream. Um, hailing from Memphis, but this guy done been all around the country. Please welcome my man, my little bro, Memph Hits. Memph, yeah, what up? Yeah, what up? What up, son? What up, Prince? What's Yo, what on, up, baby? kid? Man, I'm good, bro. Good to see you doing great things, bro. I'm seeing you out here. You're doing it, baby. Like you said you was, as always. Nah, as always. You know, my goal has always been to, to live my truth, um, do interesting things, meet interesting people. And, uh, that, you know, with this with this part of my life, I couldn't ask for nothing better. Exactly. You know, sit with exactly. good people, so. I said, I know. I said, you said I'm looking a little different. I got the beard. I got the locks. I, 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 this is my uh, this is my Creed. This is my Creed three look right here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I told you, I was telling you offline. Like, yo, damn, you look different, kid. You yeah, got a whole nah, new look going yeah. on. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I get fifty mil. Then I'm gonna cut it back off. I'm gonna cut it back. I'm gonna go back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yes, I ain't what's up, what's man? That? Thanks for All having right, me, yo, bro. You know, man, I gotta ask you. Like I said, you you originally from Memphis, but you done lived in NY. You lived in Dallas. Um, LA. You lived in LA. Yeah, you lived yeah. in Atlanta. Like, where yeah, the hell yeah. are you these days? I'm back at home. I'm at home right now. I'm in Memphis. I'm like a tourist at home, bro. Like I'm at I'm at home. Like, look at I've been at home for maybe like two months. I'm kind of just looking for new, looking for talent, like looking for stuff here that I didn't see when I was when I was living here. You know, when I was living here, I was so hell bent on getting out of here to to say I was successful to get to, you know, I graduated from Memphis that I didn't really appreciate it. I knew we had talent, but I didn't appreciate what it was when I was trying to, I was off hustling, trying to get to a higher place in my life. So to come back all these years later and I've seen the world and I've been, I've dealt with so many different people now to come here and look and see it from a, I'm not hustling against them. I'm hustling with them now. It's kind of like, you know, it's like, I can see it. It's like, so it's like so many talented people here. So I'm just kind of a little bit at a time, I'm just kind of watching, you know, I'm kind of seeing what I, what I want to help, help out. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stuff here, but it's only certain stuff that matches with my, you know, matches with my personality. So it is what it is. That's what I'm looking for. You know, that's, that's a very interesting perspective, right? Like yeah. I know what it is to try to get out of uh, uh, where you come from and desperately try to make it in the game. But like you said, you done, you done been around the world now. You done made it in the music industry. And coming back, because right now, Memphis, like once upon a time, Memphis had 3-6 Mafia. Um, Pastor Troy's from out that way. Um, it's so many, 8 Ball and G is out that way. Yeah. Kia Shine um, exactly. out that way. But it's a whole new ball game down there. Memphis oh, yeah. is oh, yeah. killing the game right They're now. Killing it, killing it, killing it. And, it's, and it feels good to be at home around it. You know what I mean? It's like I, you can feel it. It's like a vibe in the city. It's like, you know, we got our we got our gangsters. We got our singers. We got we got everything. It's just a talented place. Like, I feel like a lot of this, a lot of the music came from Memphis back in the day. A lot of people don't understand that crossroad between rock music and R&B and Motown a lot of that stuff I mean Motown is definitely Detroit but a lot of that hardcore music blues and things like that came yep. from Memphis so the soul it's a, it's a soul it's a spirit here that that you can't that you can't deny you know so when you come in here and you can you can find anything you want it just depends on what you're looking for okay so so you coming back to Memphis now like are you seeing it with new eyes is the is the the, the new up and coming talent is it impressing you yeah, it's like it's 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 good to see from eyes that can I can I can see them. You know what I mean? It's like when I was like I said when I was here hustling, I can't you know you're one of them, so you can't you can't see it. You 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 you're trying to compete to get out of here. So it's like a you know, but to come back and see it with fresh eyes, eyes of almost like a almost eyes of a tourist. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's like I'd be downtown seeing stuff I never really like. Well, this been here like this was here the whole time. Like they like nigga, you been gone forever, nigga. So I'm like good. It's glad to be home, man. So it's like. 
see, yes, it's, it's people that are impressing me. It's, I'm, I'm putting a little group, a group together right now. Three girls, you know. Um, uh, I'm, I'm being distributed. I got my new, my new label. I didn't want to really come back with the hits committee thing. I came back with this production company, Sound Mob uh, Productions, and I'm kind of like signing up these new, um, these new girls, uh, some singers. You know, I'm trying to bring some R&B vibes back. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, working at Beat Group. Uh, distribution with my with my OG David Port I was telling you about that uh, started yeah. this company made in Memphis Entertainment and it's like a he's such a legendary writer and legendary uh, person in the music business in Memphis to to even help have me working for him is an honor so it's like I love to be around I'm up under a record man again you know I love working for record men men that, that actually love records so between him and Isaac Hayes and Stacks, and then him starting this company he said he came back to Memphis and started kind of cultivating talent so to bring me back under his regime it's pretty cool so I'm, I'm here doing the same thing looking for artists to help with distribution uh, and influence them and help them understand the importance of being staying independent you know a lot of a lot of artists always want to jump to the boat and go major but there are so many advantages of staying independent if you if you know what you're doing and you're doing the right things and you're being guided in the right ways there's 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 gold in being and staying independent so that's what we out here promote like you're already doing your thing independently let us put steroids in your operation and that's that's how we coming at it so i'm loving to be here seeing seeing things like that and and being able to help it just feels good especially being back around my family and being around people that i actually love and it's like you know you being in cities i get love in a lot of different places and cities but it ain't the same love as or, like or, or the, it ain't the same as home and it, it, it ain't the, it's also not the same the fire that gets in me when i'm at home because i'm know, back around you know back around people that you know i i wouldn't say they think small but i'm like i'm back around people that you have to prove everything you say you're gonna do to mm -hmm. i gotta prove everything so I, that that I forgot that fire you know so to be back around in that fire and i'll say i say i'm gonna do something and people are like i don't know about that one Okay. Yo, you telling me people still doubt you with all that you did? Your resume, they but it's, still it's almost, but it, but, No, no, it, it's cool, but it's I I really feel like I I incite it because it's a part of my it's a part of what I need to if I don't have a target or if I don't have somebody telling me what's not going to work, I can't make it work. Like I need you to tell me why it's not going to work. Once you tell me why it's not going to work, then I'm going to go do what I do. If I if I still believe it, if if you if it makes logical sense what you told me, I still might still go try to do it, but it's just I need I need I need those people in my life that kind of challenge me, you know. And and this is the place, home. <laughs> you know, you know, most great people need exactly what you're talking about. They need a challenge. That that yeah. that's the stimulant. That's the exactly. thing that wakes them up in the morning. People saying what can't be done. Exactly. And, um, exactly. You you that's a thread that you find through most successful people. Um, yeah. Let me ask you something. How how old was you when you left Memphis the first time? When I first left Memphis, I was 20 years old. I think I was 20. I was 20 years old. I was about to be 21, I think. Yeah. And and you I, you went straight to I, NY? Straight to New York. Straight to New York and got my way in that building. Got my way into uh, well, I was I went to New York. I got in this school. IAR used to be over on a uh, um, Union Court uh, uh, courts. Uh, I forgot what well, you remember where the Virgin Building used to be with the rec with the records and Absolutely. They had those times the clock ticking and going up. Yeah, like going. I, I I went to a school over there, you know, over on Union Square. I uh, Institute of Audio Research and there you go. One of my, yeah, one of my internships was Arista Records, and that's when I got in there. I think I was like twenty when I got to Arista. I think I was like twenty one. I was twenty one years old. Okay, so so I want you to walk me through this um, a little slowly for people who don't know your history. First and mm -hmm. foremost, you fly up to New York. You, yes. you have any friends and family up there or you just was like, F it, this is where I need to be? No, I had, I, had, I had a person that knew a person and the, that person told me I could come up there and stay on the couch for a second until her boyfriend came and put me out. I was in Harlem when I first got to New York. <laughs> He's like, bro, you can't sleep on this couch, bro. You tripping, bro. I was like, bro, you're a grown man. I was like, damn. I was like, all right. So I ended up going to Kew Gardens with this other girl. So I kind of was like on couches, like I was doing my Ray Charles thing. I was, I was, <laughs> my rent, my rent wasn't money. It was uh, the draws. So it was like, <laughs> like you gonna, she like she like you gonna pay me something. I'm like, oh my lord, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah. 
So that that was the first run. It was like I was staying kind of like pillar to post, and I just was like interning at finally got interning at Arista, and you know, of course, that's where I met a lot of influential people in my life. Um, starting off with uh, Karen Kwok and Sam Lecker, and that's when I met Pitts, and I saw Pitts in his office, and I was like, "Oh my God, are you Puff?" And he's like, "No, I'm not Puff, but." That's my brother. I was like, boy, you look like him. I was like, I thought, I was like, I've been watching y'all on TV. I got family in New York. Like, hey, I work on the video floor. Can I work up here with y'all? And that's when Mark let me come up to the, told me to tell, go tell Sam Lecker and Robin. Wow, I forgot the rest in peace to Robin. But uh, yeah, she told me to come up there and work with work with him. And I told Sam, she was like, Mark Pitts told you you could go come working on the A&R floor. I was like, yes. And he, he told me to come tell you that. So she let me go. She let me go up to the A&R floor and I just kind of slave for them you know like you know, i don't know if you remember like i just used to slave for pitts daryl jones ty v joey arbage karen kwok i was the i was the intern that was older than all the other interns but i was the master intern and, and eventually it turned into an opportunity for me so and that's where i came from yo yeah. you, you know your stories sound eerily familiar to mine because arista records it was on 57th street at the time yes yes with oh. the gold doors with the gold doors. And for anybody who's not familiar with the with uh the record industry in, in particular, Arista Records, Arista is a little different than every other record label because on every floor was a different department. Yes. So you could be on, I don't know, the fourth floor, that's publicity, the fifth floor might be um promo, the sixth floor might be A and R. So video. Sixth floor was video, ninth floor was A and R. There you go. Yeah. So for you to even, because I, I remember when I started, I was that was my first internship, and I was working in the publicity department. One of the things I hated about that that particular internship was because I never got to see any of the other departments. They had me like, in, in, so the fact they had me in this one cubicle office, and all I did was publicity all day, which I couldn't stand. But at least well, I was in the building. Exactly. So the fact exactly. You actually escaped. From from where? Matter of fact, what department did you start in? Uh, admin, admin with Karen Kwok, and I was like, wait okay. a minute. I was like, I thought this was the floor where the artists be. <laughs> and I was like, no, this is A and R admin. That's A and R creative. That's on the ninth floor. I'm like, I'm on the wrong floor, nigga. But I'm working already, <laughs> so it's like I don't know what I'm gonna do. Then I got a I got wind that somebody they needed people dubbing videos on the on the video floor. So I was like, I I, I got myself into that floor. So I, that's when I ended up going to six. And then from the six, I was like, this is still like this still ain't the floor, bro. So I used to see Pharrell and Pitts and them. They used to be coming down to the floor, like doing stuff. And I'm like, who is them niggas, man? So then all of a sudden I'm like, I got I gotta get on this ninth floor. I'm hearing about the ninth floor too much. I gotta get on the ninth floor. That's where LA Reed is. I'm like, so I got my boy from uh Lenny. I forgot Lenny's last name, but uh Lenny gave me a um let me do his let me do his little run. He had a little mail run he did, and he was like, you he like, I gotta leave. Can you want to do that mail run you always be asking me about? I was like, hell yeah. So he gave me the shit. I was delivering, putting stuff on niggas' desks, and that's how I got on the ninth floor. And I was looking around, like, oh my God, this is the floor I've been looking for. And that's when I saw Pitts in his office. The only person at work was Pitts. He was in his office listening to music, and I, I just looked in his office, and that's when I was just stuck. And he was like, Hello, nigga, what you looking at? Nigga, I was like, Puff. <laughs> So you I'm literally ready. introduced yourself to Pitts. To, and, and for anybody who don't know, we talk about Mark Pitts. Yeah, Shout out to my boy, Mark Gooch. Pitts. What up, Gooch? There Thanks you go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you yeah. met Mark by doing a mail run on, yes. on the ninth floor. Yes. I looked in his office. He was the only one up there. Because I was just looking around, look, peeking in the niggas' offices. There wasn't nobody there. And I did. I rolled up on this one office playing music. And I was just looking in there. I was like, and he was just in there listening to music. And I just like, he turned around. I was like, that's cool. I'm like, working here. <laughs> so yeah, he told me I'm not Puff, bro. I was like, who are you? He's like, I'm Mark Pitts. I used to manage Biggie. I did, but Puff is my brother. He started telling me his history, and I'm just looking at him like, what? I'm like, bro, can I work for you, bro? Please. I was like, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you need me to do. I'm sweeping this hole. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he was like, well, you crazy? You funny? So he told me he's like, you know what? Go down there and tell him that you can come work for me. You say he's like, I'm, 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 fuck, I'm messing with your energy. He's like, go down there and tell him you can come up and work for me. And that's how I ended up on a couple of days later. I was up there working for Mark, and I just told her all the all the A and R's. I'm like, well, whatever you need me to do, I'm doing it. Let's let's go. I'll that's a that dope video. story. Yeah, so that's how I got up there, man. Yeah, that's a dope that's dope story. <laughs> that's okay. exactly how it happened. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so at the time you got up there, what were the artists they was messing with at that time? 
when I first got up there, it was, uh, of course, Usher. It was all the whole little face. It was uh, TLC. It was Tony Braxton. It was, well, Mark, Mark was working. Mark was doing, um, he, he was doing this thing called Aristocats. And Mark yep. had, uh, he had Rob, uh, what was that dude's name? Rob something. He was from Kentucky. I forgot he was like a Kentucky artist, but then it had Blue Cantrell. He had, um, it was so many things going on, bro. I couldn't even understand. It was Young Bloods. It was uh, just all these different, it was all these different artists. I just couldn't believe. Whitney Houston still was at the time. That was Arista. That was that was still Clive Davis. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot going on, bro. And I just was like, I was just so happy to be up there because I, I was just watching all these people on TV. Bad Boy, I think. Was Bad Boy still Arista at the time? I don't know. Yeah, no, we were still Arista. Like, it was no, Arista. we were still yeah, yeah. So, at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was yeah, so I just was up there and I was like, this is this is where I, this is where I belong. I'm not leaving this floor. So I was kind of back and forth working at Home Depot, coming to work, working for free, you know, just they was like, How are you at everything? But I'm like, I'm telling them I got a job on the side at Home Depot there. Nobody knows I work at Home Depot. I'm like, you know, selling a little some some here and there on the streets here and there, just the, in New York, just making it. I got friends that's like, you be going up to that label every day, niggas ain't paying you, you tripping, bro. I'm like, Bro, I'm good, bro. It don't matter. I'm, I ain't going back to Memphis. I, I'm staying until I get some. I'm leaving here with some. Denzel, nigga. <laughs> nah, you know, exactly. it's, it's so dope. And people really need to listen to this part of the story because this is the grind, man. Like, people it is, bro. I couldn't, I couldn't see none of this. I couldn't see nothing when I was doing all that. I didn't know. I, I had no, saw no, I, I did see light. I'm not going to say I saw light. I just, I, I was surrounded by light. So I'm like, there has to be light here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I'm going the right way. There's no need for me to go to the streets for, for what, what niggas is, you know, what I'm doing right now, you know, to, to, to help me survive what I'm doing right now. That's not it. That's not it. I know that's not it. I know this Home Depot. I know that's that job. That's not it. What I'm doing for free. That th everybody telling me you shouldn't be working like that for free for niggas. And they just, they rich all around you. They just being rich in front of you, nigga. You just broke. I'm like, I don't, you know what? I'm gonna stay right here, and I end up it ended yep. up turning into a into a you know a money maker my damn self, you know. So I was like, I felt like I was hanging with eagles, and I felt you know you hang with eagles, eventually you gonna you gonna start sprouting eagle wings too. Yep, you gonna soar. You you exactly. you hang you hang with eagles. You eventually you gonna soar. You gonna learn exactly. to fly, and you gonna soar. Um, exactly. yo, how how did you eventually get your job, and how long did you intern? Uh, I interned for like, I think I interned for three, maybe two years. Two two straight years, and then I two straight up years up. unpaid. Well, they start paying me a little bit towards the end when I start bringing records in, and um, mm -hmm. I used I used to uh, come in. I was playing records for um, just just uh, first I started like listening to stuff on Mark's desk that he wasn't listening to, and I I'll, I'll be listening to it in the corner, and I'll, I'll go get stuff off Daryl Jones' desk that he wasn't listening to. They gave me permission, so I would be there all night. Like they would leave. They know I was there. They could call me and I was still at the office. So I'd just be up there listening to records. I ain't got nothing else to do. I don't know nobody in New York like that, you know, except little friends that I got on the side. So, and then I just, it just started going up from there, bro. It's kind of like, I, uh, I I don't know if you remember this, but we used to, at Arista, they used to have those uh, limousine passes where they would yep. come pick you up. And so I used to be used to the train. So niggas showed me how to fill out the pass when I, when it was time for work. So I, I, I started getting the black car start pulling up for me. So I was like, I'm, I'm jumping in the black of the black car. I'm like, intern, nigga, I, the niggas ride through the hood in the black car. They like, oh, you turn into an executive. I started getting that feeling like, nigga, I'm an executive. Nigga, what y'all talking about? So that's, the, then I started playing, uh, mark these records. I, uh, they sent me to go work with the young bloods. They was like, Cameron's like, you know what? You want you want you want a little you want a little test you want a test run you want to do an A and R job I was like yes so she put me with the young bloods they like who is this nigga y'all yeah so y'all y'all don't mess with us like that y'all gonna give us an intern as A and R so I was like <laughs> I was like listen bro don't worry about it I was like I'm from the south I know y'all music I know everything so I'm the best one to do this and they was like all right come on they was like this don't work we're gonna hurt you little dude I was like whoo all right. So we start working. We get Lil John. I get I, I get Lil John. Lil John was getting hot at the time, and I I kind of I found his number on somebody's desk, Mark or Daryl Jones' desk, and I called Lil John. He was like, I was like, I told him I was an A and R, which I wasn't yet, but I just told him I was, and he ended up coming and uh, coming to the studio. I set up the set up the session. JD JD Jermaine Dupree had just did a deal with uh, Arista. And J and J JD is the is the reason I got with the Young Bloods. He talked to Karen. Karen talked to him. They said let him try it. 
JD was like, all right, I'm gonna put you with the young bloods. We go to Atlanta, Lil John, we all in the studio trying to come up with this hook for the song for the songs. And we already had most of the album done. And then all of a sudden somebody, Bo Hagen, walks in and says, if you don't give a damn, we don't give a fuck. So everybody, Lil John's like, and everybody turned like, that's the hook, nigga. So we put the hook on, do the record. We don't give a damn. We don't give a fuck. So I end up getting, I, I, they was like, all right, here you go. I was like, all right. So I go to JD. I'm like, JD, I got, I'm going to play you some stuff, you know. And I play, I give him the records and he like, he's listening to them in my face. Him and Brian Cox and they just sitting all sitting there listening. And, he, and JD turned around. He's like, uh, he's like, this is a hit. And I was like, it's a what? And he's like, it's a hit. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a hit. I'm like, 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 like it's gonna work. Like he's like, this is it. Watch this. And I was like, oh, all right. So I go in the restroom. I'm in. The, we at uh, 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 what is it? damn Southside Southside Studios. We go and I go in the restroom. Nigga, I swear to God, I'm in there doing a whole touchdown dance in the bathroom by myself. Nigga, I'm like, nigga, said it had a hit, nigga. So that's how it happened. I come out normal face. All right, go back to New York. JD starts the record up, getting the record out there. So, so I'm like, I'm like just watching the shit just get bigger and bigger. And they like looking at me like, they like, you did your thing. You came back with the fucking, you came back with the hit. I was like, what? Mark is like, wow, you went in there. You, okay, okay, okay. I was like, I'm almost not an intern no more, sir. So y'all get so ready. So hold on. Even at this time, you still you still are an intern. Still you intern, still-, still intern, still unpaid, like still unpaid. But it's a hit outside. It's a hit brewing. So that's when LA was like, yo, wh- where did this record come from? What's going on? And Karen and JD is like, Memphis, uh, the intern from Memphis, he came back with that. So LA looking at me like, because I, I, at first I couldn't even come into meetings. I, I was just sitting outside the meeting. And I was sitting outside the meeting one day. And Karen came. L.A. looked out the meeting and saw me sitting there. I was supposed to be, everybody was supposed to be gone. But they was having an A&R meeting. L.A. was like, sent Karen out there. And Karen was like, L.A.'s like, you, you're weirding him out. Why are you just sitting out here, <laughs> sitting out here looking in the meeting? And I was like, I was just trying to listen to him talk. I, I just want to hear what, he, what y'all saying. Uh, that's all I'm doing. And she went back and told him that. And, she, and that's when L.A. said, tell him to come in here. He can sit in the meetings. He's like, that, that was the best answer I ever heard. So they let me in the meeting. She's like, but don't talk. Don't say nothing. So I used to just be in the A&R meeting with Mark and everybody and all the people that I usually interning and slaving for. Now I'm sitting in the corner in the A&R meeting just not talking. And one day when, when L.A. was like, where this record come from? That's when Karen pointed at me. She was like, OK, you can talk. And I was like, I just told him how I put the record together. And he was like, what? And, and that, it kind of went from there, bro. And it went from there. And then all of a sudden, they, uh, Karen, I told Karen I had a lead. Uh, some I heard on Daryl's desk, some uh, the track boys. And I was like, can I go see these dudes? They got this artist I want to go see. I go out there. Karen approved my travel. I went. I, that was my first flight as an A&R. I'm still kind of interning. I don't have no money yet. Karen is di- talking about discussing, maybe giving me, uh, hit me with a little 50 piece a year. I was like, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, I'll quit Home Depot tomorrow. Yeah, so it's just like, uh, so I go to get to um, St. Louis, meet the track boys. They introduce me to Jay Kwan. Uh, he he is super interesting character to me. I was like, man, I'm trying. I'm about to go back and tell him what I saw. I get back to Arista. I, I, I you know tell him about Jay Kwan. They set up a meeting. I get to bring him to um, New York. JD is in there, and he performs in there, standing on L- LA's chairs and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, these niggas gonna fire me. I'm like, I don't know you that good, nigga. So I'm fussing at these niggas on the way down the elevator. I'm like, you niggas get me fired. Niggas gonna be on there. You stand on that man desk, man. So he's like, <laughs> I get back up. LA's like. Congratulations on your first signing. I was like, so I, when I first went in the office, though, everybody was looking at me crazy, like Mark looking at me, like everybody mean mugging me, like I, it was a setup. I didn't know it was a setup. The first one, when I walked back in there, they was looking at me like. So I was like, <laughs> all right, well, go ahead and give it to me easy. <laughs> it was like, and that's when LA was like, nigga, congratulations on your first signing, and, and the whole A and R staff just starts clap, clapping and applauding me, and I was just like, what? Y'all like that? They was like, we that nigga, that was tough. And then when after we got to work and I come back in the in the office with everybody in the club, get tipsy. And uh Monster. that's kind of like it went from there. It's like now I started getting I started getting paid. I think I got my first my first um salary, I think I started getting like 125 a year. But I ain't never seen no money like that in my life. So Yo, they started you off nice. They started yeah, yeah. you, you know, I started, good you know, I started, salary. They started, they started paying me. I, I started, I got a real job. I got a real little job. I got a little travel thing. And I started, they started letting me travel. And then right when I got that, Arista fell down. It, Arista, they, it was, you know, it went down and LA had to go to Def Jam. And so I was like, it was, it was short lived. And then, uh, but LA helped me get a job, helped me get a meeting with all the different labels, the whole industry. 
and I was having meetings, but I got the job records, and that's where um, that's what me and Pitts end up going together. Pitts went on his own contract, and I ended up being like, yo, it was just the stuff on the wall. I was I used to I used to judge labels by the plaques on their walls. Mm. So I would look up, and it was like stuff I used to really look at. Like you know, I'm looking, I'm seeing, I'm seeing Will Smith, I'm seeing Too Short, I'm seeing R, R. Kelly without the shenanigans. I'm seying, you know, it's like Britney Spears. I'm seeing in sync. I was like, what the? I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna work here. This it's like a it's like a vibe in here. I'm gonna, it's like an entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit in here. So I told Barry Weiss, I just I want to be here. I want to be one of y'all, man. I want I feel like this is my best opportunity to work with somebody like you and I can become who I am, you know. And he was like, all right, all right. So they they offered me the most money, I think. Then I, 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 I think I started that job at 250. And I ended up my I closed out up there. I was making five hundred thousand dollars a year. When I when I left um, T after T Pain, that's when I got T Pain. I brought my first artist at job for for that job was T Pain, and uh, after T Pain, I just yeah I was making like five hundred thousand a year plus my own label hits committee started, and I ended up doing the deal on BT because Stephen Hill wanted a piece too. Hold, hold on, before before we even go, because you go like I, I need to zone in on that. Like yo, yeah. that ain't, make it make coming from Memphis. Yes, but twenty nothing. years. Of, yeah. With no money, zero None. I came to New York with a thousand dollars. That's crazy. Sleeping on somebody's couch, yeah. getting kicked out, going to somebody else's couch in Kew Garden, Queens. Yes. Taking an internship, working for close to two years with no money. I ate cheese slices every day. It was like a, it was just my food. And that's why I started this off by saying you, you, you definitely have lived the American dream. This this is what it's about. But yes, I, what I don't want to get lost in this conversation is the work. I don't yeah. want to get lost in this conversation as you believed in you when, when people was telling you, yo, quit. Like, exactly. what are you doing working for free? And there's a bunch of other rich people right there next to you. Exactly. They, and I'm surrounded by, by, by dope boys. And they're telling me you're tripping. You could make this money right here. You got the swag. Let's do this. And I was like, nah, bro, this ain't what I came for, bro. I could did I could have did this in Memphis. I ain't selling dope for that's not what I came here for, you know? Nah, like, like th th that story is so dope, man, and it's so inspirational. And it's what a lot of people need to hear. Because before, before you get the notoriety, before you get the celebrity, before you get the 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 money in the bank, yeah. it's the work that nobody else sees. It's that exactly. work you in the dark man so congratulations on that thanks bro but thanks bro let's pick it up at jobs oh god yeah. right. then now you go over there your a and r yes was this this is when you really started the blow. i started a director direct i started as director of a and r that was my first job director of a and r so i got to you know so i had my i was moving like i feel like i was almost getting to move like pits now pits and all the the a and r's i was working for and slaving for they, I, I watched them for so long that i just knew how to move like them i knew how i just had a, a certain swag about me it, it had rubbed off on me so that's how i, I came in as director and it ended up jumping to vp and uh, and that's why I, that's, I was my last year as a job. I was vice president of uh, A and R. Okay, who was your first signing over there? T Pain at Jive was my first. So T Pain was, was legit your first signing. First signing at to Jive Records. My first signing to Aris. My first project to work on. No, I'm talking about at Jive. Yeah, at Jive. Job. When I first got there, right after I signed my deal, the first sign, the first thing I brought was T Pain. Okay, let's stop there for a second. What was yeah. it about T Pain? that attracted you to him uh it was just his records i didn't even i didn't even know what he looked like yet I, I was in miami uh jd had me working on something in miami i went to my i was working on bone crush bro. he had me doing bone crushes uh uh i was a and r for bone crushes and so jd gave me that project and i was in miami just chilling uh about to get ready to go meet with some producers and this guy tj's dj saw me and he's like my boy, he was, he was like, uh, he was like, you ain't you, you, you Memphis hits, you that kid from Memphis that blah 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 went and did all this stuff. And he was like, yo, I, people told me to give you this uh, CD right here, and I was like, he's like, if you don't like it, don't ever call me again. But people told me to give it to you, and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll take it. So I'm in this at this time. I'm in limos. I'm like, I really used to be tossing nigga CDs out the window. Like I, I got this little thing. Like I'm giving you three minutes, nigga. You got, you probably ain't even got three minutes with me. I'm like, I hear the first, what? Nope. So I'm like. 
just tossing out the window. Now, all of a sudden, I put this one in, and the driver puts it in, and I'm like, and the first thing I heard was, I'm sprung. I'm sprung. How she get me? And then this heavy bass, and I'm like, she got me doing the dishes. I'm like, what in the world? So I'm like, bro, play what? What is that? What, take that CD out and tell me what's on the front of it. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, T Pain. He's reading it to me. I was like, give it to me. So he gave it to me. T Pain. I'm like, this the dude that gave me the CD at the at the little restaurant right now. Told me don't call him. I called him. I was like, bro, I'm calling you, bro. Who is this, bro? <laughs> so I'm just gonna rest with the CD. And I was like, what? He's like, yes, that's T Pain. He's in Tallahassee. He was like, I would love for you to come. See. I was like, tell me when. So I called Karen. I was like, yeah. I mean, I called um, Barry. I told him, it's a guy in, in, in Tallahassee I want to go see. His name T Pain. I want to go see him. I get to T. I get to Tallahassee, and uh, I walk up, and T Pain is in the front of the house. And I was like, I was like, yo, I'm here to see T Pain. I'm trying to find T Pain, and the, the guy that's on this music right here. And he's like, uh, I'm T Pain. Oh, like, ho hold on. T at that point, you still hadn't seen him. I ain't seen him yet. No, I was going Crazy. to see him. I had, I pulled up on this dirt road, this uh, dirt road in Tallahassee with all these cars in the in the yard and dirt. And I was like, so I walk up to the house and he outside smoking a cigarette. And I was just like, yo, I'm, I'm looking for T-Pain. I came, um, you know, he's like, I'm T-Pain. I was like, no, I was like, the guy that's, that's singing these songs. <laughs> <laughs> so that nigga like, he like, boy, I'm telling you, I'm, that's me. And I was like, what? He's like, who are you? I was like, Memphis. I can't. The, he's like, the A&R we've been talking to that's coming to see me. I was like, yeah. He's like, you look like me. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. So we both look like we didn't look like. He's like, you look like a dark skin, a black ass Nelly. He does, so he, that's what he told me. He's like, you look like a black <laughs> ass Nelly. And I was like, OK. I was like, you don't look like I thought you was going to look. And so we just start talking. And here comes Boo, Boo, uh, Boo Akon's brother, uh, Boo Thane. And he's like, uh, and I'm sitting up here like, what? What are you, what's going on? And he's like, he's like, what you doing here? I'm like, what you doing here? So he's like, we we just we at the house at the same time. So that's when I get on the phone with Akon. Akon tells me he's like, oh, that's my brother, that's my little bro, Memphis. He's like, you know, so I was trying to sign Akon, and Akon was like, I'm already signed, but I appreciate you trying to find me. <clears throat> this is doing locked up when I was I was on a I was on a little college tour, and I heard locked up, and I was trying to find the guy on the CD that was singing locked up, and I found it's Akon. And that's what he tells me. He's like, no, nah, I already got a deal. He's like, I'm already with Rifkin. He's like, don't even worry about me. He's like, but the fact that you're looking for me like that, he's like, I need that kind of love, you know? He's like, but we're going to do business one day. End up finding with the T-Pain thing. He's like, Memphis, that's me. He's like, I, I want you to sign him. We told you we was going to get money together. But I, he's like, let me sign him first to eight to, to um, Convict. And then you sign him the job. So I did that. I, I, I stalled out. For a let, uh, Akon told me, okay, I'm done. Now you go. And then I brought T Pain the job, and I gave T Pain his first major deal at Job Records. Okay, so so yeah. I always wanted to know because I thought that um T Pain had music out with Convict before you signed him to to Job. No, we did that deal simultaneously. Yeah, got you. And that's because Akon called me and said, a quick call. He's like, "Man, I know you. I know you could go sign him right now, but." Give me one, give me, I'm almost, I'm in a deal, I'm in the talks with him about doing, he's like, you really want to sign this guy? I was like, man, I'm going to sign him today. What, what? He was like, all right, let me do this first, my nigga. I was like, all right, go get it done. And now he's convict. Okay, now convict, now let's go to job. So that's how I did convict job. Yeah. Okay, got you. Yo, let me ask you, you, you T-Pain was doing all that auto-tune. That didn't scare you away early? Nah, it made me love it. He, he, he was scared of it. I was like, what you, what you mean? He was scared of it. He was like, uh, he's like when I when he first played it to me in the, in the in the crib and everybody, all his brothers was sitting around me and he was playing music and I was like, so you 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 did the beat too? And he's like, yeah. And he was like, saying he's like that little thing on my voice. I just, uh, I was like, nigga, I'm here for the thing on your voice, nigga. And he's like, that's that's just for me to tune my voice, tune my vocals. But I'm gonna take that off when I get a deal. I'm gonna just take all that stuff off and just sing because I can sing for real. And I was like, I can tell you can sing for real, but I came here for that sound. That you got on the on your rec on the on the vocals, like don't take that off. That's what I'm here for. He's like, what? You like that? And I was like, nigga, what? Don't take that off, bro. I was like, people are gonna be copying this. I told him I was like, people are gonna copy this. Watch what I tell you. And he had moments where he was like, man, I need to take this off, man. I was just like, 
bro, keep it, bro. And we had those conversations. I used to go buy pain sounds. I used, Cause I had, cause in the beginning I was with the one with the money and pain was now I got money and pain don't have money. So I was like, I'm, I'm buying him stuff. I'm buying him everything. I take him everywhere. I'm cutting his hair. I'm like, tell him like, put these shades on. You got to put shades on. Like you, I'm like, watch, you're going to be like on some, you know, you're going to be a superstar nigga. The hoes going to be on you. And he's like, bro, I'm married, bro. I don't want no hoes. I don't want none of that. I was like, still got to walk in the room a certain way, bro. You still got to walk in the room a certain way. And that's, I kind of like helped, you kind of, I kind of just, grew, you know, A&R shit. I groomed him. I kind of, you know, he had the, uh, he had, his hair was, you know, the, the, the duck bills or whatever they, I forgot what they call them, but what they call the, the, the dreads with the, uh, that, that I have the, no the, idea. Yeah, you whatever. See yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I, I was just cutting them different. I, I got my, I got my cousins. I put my cousins on them. I put all these people on them that's getting styled together. And that's how we, we came in and, and, and he's T-Pain today. He had done great things. We just, we just start, we just streamed a billion uh, streams on Spotify. Like I looked at it the other day and all these songs that from the beginning were nothing. And now he has streamed a billion a billion has a billion streams on Spotify between all these little records that we was just putting out, you know. So I'm like, I'm I'm super proud of that, you know. So that's amazing, so, man. That, yeah. That's that's so amazing. And I'm gonna tell you another thing. Um, people people wouldn't have took the risk that you took. Granted, hearing I'm sprung, that record's a hit, but yeah, we know it now because it became a hit. Exactly. So, exactly. I, I don't know what it was for you. Obviously, for you listening to it the first time in the back seat of of that limo. I can feel it. Like, yeah. Yo, I it's a hit. It. But you know, I knew I had I had girls that had me like that. You know, got me doing some <laughs> anything she won't for some, anything she won't for some kisses. Like I was like, what? I, I, I girls that had me like this, so I felt it. But the way he was delivering it was so different that I was like, bro. I'm trying to be here for bringing stuff that people never heard in a way. Like, because Mr. Porter told me he's like, nothing is new under the sun. He's like. Nothing is really new. It's the way you deliver it. The way you the way you find out a different way to deliver something. It's the, still still the same love spirit. It's still the same love vibe. It's still the same hate vibe. It's still the same money vibe. Just how do you decide to how did how did you interpret it? And that's and that's how you know music will go on forever because it's always being recreated. The delivery is always being recreated. You know. Yeah, but where I, where I really give you the credit because he, I mean Mark Pitts was up at um job at the same time yeah 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 yep. he got usher um, yeah he got chris brown so at the time it's me it's me with pain there you go and, and mark got chris brown so i'm like he got chris brown yeah. he got usher he and and, and and the dude who built that building who put who put who put bricks in that building is robert kelly at the time not the, yes. not today's rob kelly but yeah, exactly, back exactly, in the exactly the now, one i was a huge, that's when I, when I was a huge fan of r kelly so T-Pain's feel gave me a new futuristic R. Kelly vibe. And that's how I, that's what, that's what made me go to him. But, but to, to, to the, to the point I'm trying to get out, because if you look at all of those dudes, um, Usher, Chris Brown and Chris Brown, that that's him in, in, in the early, early days. Yes. Um, R. Kelly, they look like leading men. They yeah. look like, you know, solo it. Seeing mm -hmm. the T Pain, T Pain don't necessarily look like a at that time. Exactly. So exactly. for you to take a, a a chance on this dude based on the music, I yeah. gotta give you the credit because that's what A and R is about. It, exactly. it, it's about can this dude produce hits? Can exactly. they write the records? Can they sing? Can they evoke emotions out of you? And I, I don't watch the industry. Oh, you know, they, they chase all of the things that are not important. You know, the, the, the look, the popularity, um, the popularity, how many yeah. likes this, that, and the third and music is always last on the list. That's so I, I, I love the fact that, you know, based off the music, you gave that man a deal. That's dope. Yes, yes, yes. And that's how, and that's, and, and from there I got my, like I said, I got my label hits committee. And so you got you got hits committee from because the of T -Pain. success of T Pain. Success of T Pain. I got my label, my first label, hits committee, and I was, okay. like, think, I was trying to think of a name and all this stuff, and that, you know, came up with everybody was calling me hits already. So I was like, you know what, hits committee, because I got a committee of people that I play stuff for, you know. So speaking of that, I, I never, I should have asked you this earlier. Obviously, you're from Memphis. Where the mm -hmm. where the name? Who gave you the name Memphis? Uh, New York. 
New York when I when I was living in New York I was like uh everybody was just calling me some most some people called me Memphis some people calling me Tennessee some people start calling me hits they was like oh you got the hits huh you all right hits all right hits so I was like yeah. I just was hearing it some people would be like Memphis then somebody would be like hits and I'm like Memphis hits Memphis hits so I wrote it on a piece of paper <laughs> I wrote it on a piece of paper I was like yo if I just my city is Memphis if I take away this S put this T and this Z it's Memphis hits. And that's how my name came. I wrote it on a piece of paper from, but I was hearing it from in the office, just from different people calling me Memphis. And then simultaneously, I heard somebody call me Hits and Memphis. Hey, Hits, Memphis, Hits. I was like, dang, that's my name. And that's why I wrote it on a sheet of paper. It read correctly. And then I took the Memphis off the Hits, it kept Hits and put the committee. And Memphis Hits has Hits committee. And that's where it came from. Got you. Okay. Who's your favorite artist signed the Hits committee? My first artist to hits committee was Huey, pop lock and drop it. You know, Huey. I forgot all about Huey. Huey. Yes, rest in peace, my brother gone. I man. forgot all about yeah. Huey. Yes, Huey. Huey was right after. Huey was my first artist on hits committee, and uh, it, we we just kept we just kept it. the hits. It was like coming from T Pain. It was already coming from Young Bloods, and was already coming from uh, Jay Quan. Then it started with T Pain, and all of a sudden here comes Huey. So it just kept going. It was just. It was just like a hit thon Like it just was, it, and I was just really like stuff vibes that I was getting. Or I would go to a city and I would see a record come on. And I see the whole club go crazy for it. And I'm like, I'm going back with this. And even when nobody in New York could see what I saw, they just believed that I saw it. I'm like, I, I'm telling you, this came on and the whole place knew the word. And they dropping and they was doing something. I was like, I was like, I'm telling you, this this right here. And it came out and it did just that to the rest of the world as well. Yeah. Done deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you got Huey. Who would you follow Huey up with? After Huey, uh, it was after Huey was this guy Trady from Dallas. Trady was uh had this record called Gutter Bitch. It didn't really go as big as uh pop lock and drop and things like that. It was just things with the label, you know, things with the label. But Trady, that's still my partner. He's still out here, he's still doing music. Uh shout out to Trady. Uh he had uh, that's my gutter bitch and uh uh popular. Uh, he even got me in the song one time. He said, "Miff been feeling himself since he got married to Toya and all that." So I was like, "What the heck?" So, but but he, that that he was next, and then right after him was K Michelle, K Michelle from K Michelle from Memphis, yeah, which ended up being my notorious one of my notorious relationships. That I don't know. Okay, we we got to dive deep into that if you if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and this is well known. It's well documented. Um, yeah, but. You know, I, I've seen a lot from K. Michelle's side, mm -hmm. her perspective on the relationship. I, I only really saw you on defense, you know, yeah. never really given your your true perspective um, on that same relationship. So mm -hmm. let, let's start from the business side before it got personal. Where did you meet K. Michelle? I met her at the office at um, at 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 uh sony we were already we had our job had already moved over to rca so we were in the new sony building and that's where we i met her i was walking through the office doing something and she was actually in wayne williams office uh with, okay. with her attorney erica wright she was in, the, in in his office and when i walked past the office she just saw me and she was like hey i, well, I went in the office and i was speaking to Wayne and while I was in there Kay was looking at me I looked at her I was like hey, you know, how you doing he was telling me about she was an artist here and try, well she was an artist trying to get on and I was like cool and then she got up and she was like let me talk to you right quick so I was like all right so she took me in office she's like I'm about to sing for you I was like all right come on come on come oh, did, did, did she know who you was at the time she, yeah she told me she knew who I was she's like ain't you the, okay. um, like ain't you the ain't you the dude from Memphis you from my city I was like yeah I'm from Memphis she's like you you came here and you 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 put out this you put out that she's like I know who you are I was like okay cool and she's like you about to listen to me sing right now and I was like let's go so she grabs my arm I take her to the conference room and we're in the conference room and she starts singing I was like whoa so I was like I had never heard no nothing this good in my life I was like yo you want some what is going on you can sing sing you can sing like she's like I told you she's like I was like, I'm about to, I was like, what you doing in there with Wayne? Like, you, she was like, I'm just at a meeting with, she talking about somebody else. I was like, well, I'm about to sign you then. She, I was like, I'm like, you ain't leaving. She, she's like, all right. She's like, let's talk, let's go in there. I'm telling them, I'm like, Wayne, you, can I, can I sign her? You know, can I, you, is this free? You know, he's like, yeah. he's like, yeah, I, I just met her. He's like, you like her like that? I was like, yes. So I signed her to the hits committee. I signed her to the hits committee and we just, that's when it started. And we was like, it was like, it was gold and I was loving it. Okay. Was loving it. So everything going smooth. 
She was the first lady. Yeah, first lady that hits committee was Kate Michelle. At, at what point did it get personal between you two? Uh, it, um, it got personal after we fucked. <laughs> 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 no, okay. no, 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 How long no, were y'all no, no. doing business before? I can, I can say that better than that. No, basically, it was just like a, it was a tension building up through the, you know, through that over time. It was like a, um, I was doing so many things at the time. I was, I was on TV. I was doing the deal. I was uh, on BT, and I, then I was, I leave BT, and I was kind of going back to the office working. So I never really had time for nothing like that. So I was like, you know, I was on my prime time type stuff. I was playing two sports, so. Uh, she just used to be like, I was taking her to events and I was introducing her as the first lady. I'm like, y'all, this is my little sister. You know, this little sister, Kate Michelle, first lady of Hits Committee. And she kind of got tired of that intro. And she was like, I don't like that intro. When you be introducing me as your little sister and first lady and all that. She was like, we need to be together. She was like, you see what JV and Beyonce doing out here? She was like, if we, if we put, if we do this together, we can, we can, we can be big, big. She was like, stop, stop telling, stop telling people that. Like, and I was like, you are my little sis. Like, I would never do that. What, what are you saying? And she's like, start. That's when the sexual thing started coming up. And, you know, and I was like, I I, I think I just I just lacked guidance on that one because I, I should have asked some people. So, you, you know, well, people did tell me, don't do that. They, like, that's your artist. That is forbidden. And I think the word forbidden kind of hit me. Like, I was like, forbidden? I'm like. I'm thinking of, I'm, I, my ego is jumping. I'm like, man, I, I made all this money. I done done this, I done done that. Niggas trying to tell me who my girlfriend can't be. It's like, don't do that one, bro. You got, you get, nigga, do you know, you always got a different girl around. Why would you do that? Like, that's, that's your money. Like, don't do that. I was like, yeah. So anyway, one day I just was like, she was like, yo, come up to, we had some kind of success we had had. And she said, come up to my room and let's just have some drinks and stuff. And I'm in the, we in a truck full of people at the company. And they was like, you're not going up to, the, to her room with her to have drinks, are you? I was like, I'm just going to have one drink. <laughs> Man, y'all relax. So I go up to the room. Never came back. I never came back from the room. It was it was good advice they was giving me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I never came back from the room. Yeah. I, I called down. It was like, y'all just pull off. And they was like, no. I was like, pull off. I got my business. Yeah. And that's that's how it, that's how that got started, buddy. And the next day at work was never the same. It was never the same after that because it was like a, I, I didn't realize what I had just done. I had just gave her the same power I had. I just gave her my power. So she, now she was like looking at me like, you're not about to tell me like what to do. And you just was me and you was just what we was just doing last night. And I was looking at her like, oh, you want to use that? You know, so. It was, <laughs> it was just me, OK, you know, so. Yeah. I got to I got to ask and I, and I love the way you put that. You was like yeah. I didn't realize what I had done. Yeah. I had legitimately gave her my power because yeah. now it's no longer uh artist exactly. Yeah, it's not that no more. It's it's nigga, we on the same level. Like you you be sexing me like you think you about to be talking to me like you talk to the other artist or Somebody you just met today, you know, and this started getting crazy. I would listen to other, you know, and I'm an A&R, so I'm listening to other female artists and she would be mad. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? This is my job. Like, just like I found you and signed, like we, how I signed you, I, my job is to continue doing that. She's like, well, no more females. I'm the only female on this label. Like, I'm the only female on Hits Committee. Like, don't, I don't want to see no more females on Hits Committee. I was like, what? So that's when it started, just started, everything started clashing. I was like, you know, people looking at me like, K, K be talking to you a little different these days. Like, like y'all didn't, didn't do nothing, did you? I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, okay, so so real yeah. talk. How, yeah. how long did you know? How long was it before you knew? You as a man yeah. knew, damn, this, this, this is bad. This ain't going to work out good for me. The next day. Oh, what do you mean the next day? The next, the day, next after, day after that we hotel? Had, we had fun. We woke up. It was like, it was just like, I could tell in her eyes that she knew that I had just given her my powers. I could tell. So I was just The waiting morning on. after? Yeah, I could tell. It was like right after. It was like right after, after my, after the nut clarity kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's when I knew. I was like, uh-oh. I was like, now nah, I'm kind of like susceptible to whatever she's she throws because now I'm respecting her as I respect her differently than just my artist yesterday. Now it's my artist and it's my like we in a whole 
we moving now we now we moving it was cool it was like we was in a we was in a relationship for a little while like it, it was getting like that she moved in with me in new york so now she's in my place my you know i used to you know my my i had a condo in new york uh uh 72nd in york i was on the upper east side i was living like a little you know up on the up yep. up and coming rich dude you know so i had windows everywhere and it's like i had i moved her into that and it was almost like it was hers too now you know it was like she was moving my friends around like you know they're like they like boy you got a sheriff in this house i was like oh yeah yeah well she's she moving in so and it just became like that it was like i i had real love for her so it was like but, but it, it started getting our, our personalities and we both from the same city so it's like it just started clashing. It just started getting like, wait, I'm the boss. Like, I'm the boss. Like, wait a minute. It's my label. You know, <laughs> like, wait, it's my label. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I done fucked up. Yeah, so it was like that. That's how it was. Yeah. How but, long was but, you? But, 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 but super, super, but now all in high, like 2020, what is it? Hindsight 2020, I'm like, it, it was it's part of, it's it just it, it's part of the story it's part of the story like i can look back in, in my beginnings in the music business and I, and I know where i came from but i also got to a certain point and I, I didn't listen to people that told me not to do a certain thing and i did it anyway and nigga you get your punishment for that like i'll never do it again like i will never ever and i hope i'm glad i got it over with early i hate all the stuff that happened from it because it kind of did kind of tarnish my name in ways that I can never uh get back but mm -hmm. you know like and I stand on it to this day that I never ever put my hands on her ever I don't even I never put even, my hands even, on a woman before yeah. we get to, even before we get yeah. to that point if you don't mind me yeah, asking yeah, yeah. How, how long were y'all together before you broke up I would say it was I would say it was getting close to eight months and then that's when all hell kind of broke loose with the tv show and the, and the, stuff all the stuff I, I met toya and uh she was like you, you she's like wait you cheating on me with with this girl from tv like and i was like no i was just well, i'm watching it we she's like we watch her on tv what you doing like you you know her you met her you you ran into her i was like yeah i ran into her at a party and we, we you know we, we friends we talk sometimes and then that's that's when it was kind of like uh-uh like I'm, she's like, I want off this label now. I'm like, you can't just get off the label like that. I can't just go up to the label and say she's off the label because she doesn't like something that's going on personally in my life. And so, because I'm like, and then she started. I feel like she started figuring out like, oh, you weren't you weren't supposed to touch me, were you? You weren't supposed to like with your job and all that. You weren't supposed to. Because I started being like, no, I can't do that. I can't just go up there and let you go. She's like, oh, you're going to let me go. She's like, I got to go up there myself. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. So, you know. okay, so I'm going to ask you man to man. Yeah. Was you doing something with Toya at that time? Oh, uh, no, not at the time. Not at the time. But we were just so, talking. Yeah, we were just talking. We just had just met. We were new friends. And I just was like, she was in a relationship. And I was, she was in a relationship with some, uh, this NFL guy. And I was in a relationship with Kay Michelle. But we met, like, single. We met each other, like, well, we met each other and. We were both in a relationship, so we were just talking from there. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I didn't know this part of your story, so bear with me. Okay. A lot, well, I'm not going to say a lot, but the straw that broke the camel's back between you and Kay Michelle was she thought you were talking to Toya? She thought I was in a, in a yeah, yeah. Which I, to, to be honest, I was like a, uh, I was talking to her almost in, in, in a way that I was like, uh, I just don't, I don't like this situation I'm in. I told her what I had done. You know, I was like, I'm, I think I'm messed up because this is, this, if this goes bad, my job is in jeopardy. My, you know, the way people look at me at my, at my job, like you, nigga, you, you fucked with one of the artists, nigga, your own artist too? Like, that's a liability. Like, I, I knew it was trouble. I was like, oh, no, no. I done something bad. So I was kind of telling her like that. And she was telling me that she wasn't, she didn't really want to be in the relationship she was in. I didn't even, at the time, I didn't know, you know, she told me that her affiliation with Wayne and she was used to be married to Wayne. So I was like, oh, okay. So I, we had already been talking so long, a couple months about what, what was going on in our lives that, you know, we was, you know, it was like, and I was kind of running to her and she was kind of running to me. So we had this, we were both in relationships, but we had this mutual thing where we were running to each other for something that we didn't really want to be in. And that's okay, the relationship so we had. Um, yeah. Obviously, K. Michelle is living with you at the time. Yes. 
was there an explosion? Was there uh, 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 something that happened that finally you asked her to leave? Yeah, I just was like, I don't want to, I told her I don't want to do this no more. It was like, I don't want to, I don't want to be in a relationship with my artists. Like, it just feels weird. It's like, I got to, I'm talking to you about music all day. We're in the studio. Then I would, then we at home in the bed. We still talking about music. I just was getting annoyed a little bit. I was just like, I don't want to do this no more. Like, this is too much. This is too much. Like, I want to come home and hear something totally different from who I'm at home with. It's in my bed. I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to sleep. Like, hey, love my single is coming out. I'm like, I'm like, I, we just was talking about that all day long. So I just want to, let's talk about something different. So, so you can at least trick me that I'm not in this, in the same bed with my artist that we was just in the studio all day with everybody acting like we're not doing in the bed together right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so it was just, it was just a lot, bro. And okay. So it, you right. asked her to leave. And yeah. Well, we, well, it happened in, well, the actual blow up happened in Memphis. Uh, okay. The actual Go blow ahead. Up happened in Memphis. Yeah. The actual blow up happened in Memphis. <clears throat> And we were at a car at a car show or something like that. And uh she just got upset with me. She was like, I told her, I told her she had kind of embarrassed me. She was fussing with somebody outside. And I just kind of like, I was like, I was like, yo, you keep fussing with people that I've made relationships with. You every time I come outside, it's a, some kind of argument going on. And I was like, I feel like this is you kind I can't, that's that's not my that's not my personality. I'm like, you, you it's like you're misrepresenting me with your aggressiveness. And I'm aggressive too, but I'm not, I'm still a people person. You know, you, like it was, it was a non people person thing going on. And I was just like, that ain't me. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm tired. I can't, I'm, I'm tired of, I'm tired of going to fix stuff. I'm talking to gangsters, telling them, no, she didn't mean it like that, bro. I'm like, I'm they're like, you need to get your girl. I'm like, I'm t I can't be in conversations about like this every day about you. Like, I'm, I'm done. I, I can't do it no more. And that's when, uh, you know, that's when, you know, I, you know, I don't, I, it's been a long time. I kind of leave it alone, but that's when she kind of rushed me when I said that, that I was done. I was like, I'm out the door. I, I got halfway to the door and here comes a flying iron. So I was like, uh oh, yeah. So I was like, you know, it kind of, um, it kind of turned into something crazy. I just, it was like, oh my God, what, what have I done? And that's when it blew up. That's when the, the job gets back to the job. That's when all these things start happening. I get fired. I'm like, they like, this is a liability. It's like, tell us you did not have sexual relations with your artist. And I was like, dang. And it's like, it's like, you're done. You're done. We got to let you go. Okay. So you get fired from the label. Did you lose your deal too? Uh, kind of, yeah, I kind of lost it. I lost my deal. I lost my job. I lost, uh, yeah, I was trying to get new jobs, but every time I would walk up to a company, they was asking me like, did you really hit that girl? I was like, no. Like, why y'all okay. talking about it? It started, it started becoming a TV thing. Then she gets on TV and she says it on TV. And she's like, she's like, uh, you know what? Actually, this the TV thing is happening before she gets she gets on Love and Hip Hop. That that's yeah. where I was gonna go with this because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's when it happened. That's when it, that's when it really got ugly when she got on love and because because I was still now you know when she got on, at the time she was getting on love and hip hop. This is when she finds out that I'm I'm actually there's rumors in the streets that I'm engaged to Toya now. The same girl we were arguing about in the house. Now I'm supposedly engaged to her. So she you know I got the phone call right before she's like uh she's like I know you don't think you about to embarrass me like that. And she was like this, you she was like I'm about to she's like I'm I'm gonna hit you where it hurts. And that's what she told me. She's like, I'm about to tell people you hit me. And I was like, bro, don't do that, bro. I'm like, nobody gonna believe that shit. Everybody know me. It's like, you no, know, everybody know I'm I don't do that. So but I I kind of I kind of I didn't uh I didn't give TV its full credit. Like everybody does not know me. So it's like once you say something on TV, you just trumped me again. So it's like she's like, I'm gonna tell you know, and I was like, people did believe that. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'll, I'll run from you before I before I hit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know, so it's like, but the crazy part is about it, bro. Like, I know that this story happened, but I am so over this story. I'm so over it. I'm so, I she, can imagine. you know, I, I, big blessings to her. I see her doing big things now. And I'm just like, I, I look at it as a part of the story. Like, it's a part of my story. It's like, it doesn't, it, it's not hindering me from anything anymore. And, and it's like, I, I, of course, I went into a depression and all this when I started seeing how people was treating me, thinking, I, thinking that I did something like that. But I was like, Wow, TV is powerful. Like that is crazy, you know. So I feel like now I'm coming back from that. It's like I, it's a it's a war wound. I call it a war wound. You know? can, can we talk about the effects on you personally? Yeah. Um, you you just spoke about her going on TV, making these accusations of domestic violence. You yeah. hit her. 
you yeah. know in your heart, this is not something I did, and not something I would ever do. It's not even part of my character. Exactly. So take take that part of it out for a second. Okay. What what is from the personal side? Uh, what are you losing at that point? What you know? Are you starting to to? I, I don't know. Drink more heavily. Are you starting yeah, to start smoke drinking, more heavily? Start drinking. My cars are disappearing. My house is disappearing. I'm like all this stuff I got. So you you lost your cars and your house? Yeah, stuff start like my check. My you know I was like I had a lot in my you know especially with the money I was making, but I was I still had bills. You know what I'm saying? So yep, it, it yep. took a little it took a little minute, but it started getting crazy. And I'm and I'm like. I, I think I was, uh, when I lost my job, I was about to get married. I was about to get married when I got the news that this job is, and I'm like, wait, I'm about to get married, bro? What y'all talking about? So, you know, so it was like, all this stuff was happening at the wrong time. So it's like, I, I, I was doing this, and because of my actions and that led to this, it, I started doing this. I was like, because on one side, people are like, you know, I'm in. And then when I, when the, like I said, when the, when the love and hip hop things uh, happens, you know, I'm, 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 I'm stable, you know. But once the love and hip, the love and hip hop thing started, it started, started the, the um, started the, the decline. Like it was like I started losing things. I was like, wait a minute, I cannot go. I can't get go get the job back because you know I, I took out my, my, my. I had money saved up, so I was living off some. But I was like, I'm gonna get another job. Like niggas know, you know, niggas know I'm who I am, so I'm gonna go get another job. But it wasn't like that. It was like a, no, you hit that girl. I was like. I never hit what, like bro. Oh, I don't know if it was like niggas was looking at me like a liability at that time. Like this nigga, a fuck his artist. Like I don't know what it was. It just was like no, it was it's like, all it's all above you. You yeah, know like, that. It, it, you know, so you, I, you yeah, so I was like, wow. I, I worked at Bad Boy, so yeah. it was a lot that you know went on in in, yeah. in our um, label. But you work for corporate, like yeah, exactly. Harris the Records exactly. is very very different from. Bad boy, yeah. um, RCA, Sony, is, yeah, it's like correct. Those yeah. are corporate entities, and now on one hand, you, you're sleeping with your artists. On the other hand, you accuse of domestic violence. They can't yeah. touch you. Exactly, it, it's just that simple. Um, like, oh. let, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. You 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 said when when things started to fall apart for you, you were getting engaged. Or yeah. you had just got I was engaged. engaged. Yeah, I was engaged. I was actually, I was actually uh I got I was just getting engaged. Yeah, but but that's when I heard about all this. We was on we actually was on a um on a trip to Paris. I took my wife to Paris, and that's when the show came out and we started seeing these comments on on our uh, social media. And it's like you hit that girl. Uh, and we was me and Toy looking at the comments, like, what is going so, on? So uh, let me ask it. it was there ever a minute that Toya herself doubted you? Uh, no. Toya was Toya was really like there the whole time. She was like, I just she like your personality just don't do that. She 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 asked me before. She used to ask me. She's like, did you ever really did you touch her for real? I was like, listen, I never hit a girl in my life. I was like, now when she was hit, you know, it was a time when Kay, you know Kay was throwing them haymakers at me, hitting me like I was seeing stars. So I had to definitely had to restrain her and tell the people to call. The police, you know, call the call somebody because this girl, you're not about to knock me out in here. So I'm like, definitely, I'm gonna hold you down. Like them punches is real. Like you know, so it's like, so that I held her down. But to to ever strike somebody, strike a woman, no, nah, not not never ever. <laughs> she definitely, but after that, and she was like, I I feel that, and then she just was like, uh, she just rode with me. She just rode with me. It was things about her riding with me that she didn't want to go for that caused me even more. I feel like uh, strained, but it, it's okay. It is what it is. What, what do you just, mean? When you um, say she with you, are you talking about Toya riding with you? Yeah, she just, like when I was invited to come on to the show, uh, Mona told me to come on to the show because it was, a, a you know, she they wanted me to talk about it and and, conf and go confront K. Michelle and Toya just was like, you're not about to, we just got married, you're not about to go on no show, that's going to embarrass me. Like, now you're embarrassing me. Like, now you on the show fighting with your ex-girlfriend i'm supposed to sit here and wait on you to come back from that like i was like no go with me she's she like what if what if they get her to swing on you or something or, or something happens you know what you, i was like you know me enough you know i ain't gonna do nothing i was like why don't you come and if she do that you, you handle that she's like no nah, we're not gonna be a part of that that's trash and i was yep. like which i appreciate this is my wife at the time talking she's like that's trash like we're not going on no trash show 
talking to your girlfriend, your ex-girlfriend. We just got married. Like we got other things going on. Leave that alone. It's like, I can't really leave it alone because she's saying something about me that's kind of messing my name, like tarnishing my name out here. Like I can't really, she's like, no, leave it alone. Like just, just sue them. And I was like, sue them. I was like, this sue them. That's, that's pretty huge. That's Viacom. I, I work, I have a TV show on Viacom called The Deal. If you don't, if you remember that, I was yep. like, I worked for them. I, MTV, all the music that I ever put out, everything that I do before I met you, I have to play. I have to, it has to go to Viacom so they can play my stuff on the video shows. Like, I'm like, they know me over there. I can't just sue the, these people. She's like, well, either you do that or, or, but if you go on that show, this marriage is over. Like, I'm, I'm going to leave the ring right here. You're done. I'm, we're done. I can't do it. You're not going to embarrass me like that. So I'm sitting here stuck between one, my ex saying all this stuff about me and I can't defend myself or my or, or embarrass my wife. And I'm, I'm not married no more. So I was like in the middle of an ultimatum that I couldn't even I couldn't even move. So I was like, bro, I don't see no way out of this. It was like checkmate. Was like the devil was checkmate on that ass. I was like, he's like, which way are you going to go? You can't go either way, nigga. <laughs> I was like, nah. Yeah, but that, then all of a sudden, it, you know, time heals all. It's like, I'm like, you know, I go through the, oh, still to this day, if I comment on something, people be like, oh, you, uh, is that the way you did K. Michelle? Or is that the way, uh, oh, you, then I, then I go on, uh, what is it, marriage boot camp? Me and Toy, you going to marriage boot camp? But, like, but didn't you, didn't you eventually either bring her up on a lawsuit? Because I, I, I know. I did, you did bring I, her up on but, a but I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't box with Viacom like that. They, I had already kind of got the warnings. Like, leave this alone. Like, leave this alone. Like, don't do that. But I'm like, nigga, y'all, y'all not. Nobody is hearing me. I have a wife at home telling me to do this. Like, mm -hmm. my wife, like, sue them. Y'all are like, don't sue us. You work here. I'm sitting up here like, bro, what the? Yeah. So I end up doing the lawsuit because I didn't want to lose my wife. So I was like, uh. I did the lawsuit, but I couldn't even, I couldn't, I couldn't box with them. I ain't say that much money up. You know what I'm saying? I was, I couldn't box with them forever. Like, it's like, you keep going, nigga, you ain't gonna be able to eat soon. Like, keep this money and just bail out. Just keep the rent, keep what you got left and get out of it. And just start so, over. So I know at some point, K. Michelle, she was deposed. There was a deposition that she did. Yeah. Was that, yeah. was that in response to your lawsuit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was well, like and, a... And there was things in there. It was things in there that you know that like if I if I could have kept going, yeah, probably I would have probably came out a little different. But the fact that every they 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 can pause this thing whenever they want to pause it, shoot it a couple more months out. Like, but it's gonna cost me another fifty. It's gonna cost me another thirty. It's gonna cost me another. I'm like, I ain't about to keep spending these twenties, thirties, and fifties for this. Like this, it ain't even. It wasn't even as serious to me. I was like, I could just easily just go on the show. And people see my personality versus hers and they know, they know what's up. They like, it's just my girlfriend that's mad. Like it was simple as that. This is my, this is my uh, girlfriend that's like inferior. My ex-girlfriend is infuriated that I'm getting married, that I just got married. Like that's simple as it really is, but it didn't look like that. It looked like, you know, something else. So it is what I had to take all those bullets, buddy. In, in, in that deposition, she pretty much admitted that you never put your hand on her. Exactly. Um, I, but it's too I late to see because the TV world, the TV world is like the entertainment of what was said already is the entertainment forever of what was said. But the deposition, that's for my personal and my family and people know that actually look at stuff like that is like, man, she lied on dude. Like, he was, like, that's crazy. But what it already did to me is already done. Now I'm coming back from this place of and people are really like stall out on you. Like people that was ca calling me yesterday ain't calling me today. Like, and then for her to say that it was it was all TV now, and it was lies now, they still kind of like now it's like a guilt thing. Like you you you, you kind of turned your back on me at that time, and now you feel like big find out it was a lie. But like, oh, we not already we not already shitting on him. Like, hello, oh, sorry. And you just mm -hmm. keep going. It is what it is. Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm still the hustler I always am. So I'm always working on something and working on different things and, and on my on my return and things like that. I hate that I'm even talking about a return because I do have dreams of if I had never done that, I'd probably be some top dog executive that you just be reading about in magazines by now. By now, you know, but that ain't what happened. I actually made a bad decision because that's why choices, boy, your choices and decisions, they're yours, but they are everything. Like they are everything. Like 
you cannot be in a place of power and then and just be loose with who you who you give that power to sexually because if you give you are giving the power do you know who you just gave that power to well you're about to find out so it's like I, I i got a hard lesson on me now and i feel like that lesson came for the things that i'm gonna do the things that i'm about to do the things that i needed those lessons then get it over with now because you're the type of dude that would make that kind of mistake that crazy kind of decision you are that guy that would do that so let's get one let's get it over with now because you got other bigger things on the horizon that, that's coming up and you got to do and that thing is going to present itself to you again now what are you going to do this time and I, I I know what I'm gonna do. Like you, girl, get somebody else to do it. No, I'm good. I'm good. So, you know, I, I know you said that you have moved on with your life and you wish yeah. her the best. She's moved on. Yeah. Have you ever had a chance offline to either bump into her or on the phone and just have a heart to heart? Like, girl, do you, do you understand? I don't think she understands my life. No, I think we we talked one time. Uh, somebody called me. Uh, one of her uh, people that she deals with, one of her management called me, Tiffany. Uh, I forgot Tiffany's last name, but Tiffany called me and said, hey, somebody wants to talk to you. And she put her on the phone. And I was like, hello? And she was like, this Kim. And I was like, oh, what up? And we was, it was cool because I'm just a cool personality. Like, you, even when people do stuff to me, I, I kind of ain't really that... I, you know that shit. I might have been mad then, but I ain't even mad no more. So I'm like, what up? She like, she like, you know, it wasn't supposed to go that far, right? And I was like, I know that. I was like, what? What you mean? I I know it was supposed to go that far. She like, it was never supposed to go that far. She like, it was supposed to be so one two three. It was supposed to be. I'm gonna say this. You were supposed to come on the show. Uh, you were supposed to come on the show and dispute it. Bada bing, bada boom. They just wanted you on Love and Hip Hop, and this was a great way for you to get on there. And I was supposed to lure you in. And when you couldn't come, that's what they said. You and Toya come. And when I said, well, she like, your wife is, the, your ex-wife is the reason. You know, at the time she's saying your wife is the reason. She's like, your wife's the reason that all this blew up. Like her, she with her, like trying to sue people and all this. And she was like, she should have just let you come on there. It was, it was nothing going to happen. It would have been a totally different story. And I was like, bro, I'm so gone. I'm not even married no more. Like, I'm like, I, I damn near lost my wife because of that. I lost my wife for that, too. Like, I, like it's like it wasn't a clean. It wasn't like I just did something to lose my wife. There was like so much stress in our marriage from this, what you did, that I, I'm not even married no more. So did you end up when did you get what you wanted in the end? I know how it started. Are you happy now? Like, she's not there no more. She's gone. And she's like, I ain't do it for all that. And blah, blah, blah. And we just kind of like kind of made up on the phone. I haven't seen her since then, but I, I even like her pictures now. I'd be like, I'd be like, blessings to you. I told her the other day, I was like, I hope you're doing good. Like, I see you doing good. I hope you keep doing good. That's it. I don't want nothing else. That's all I'm telling you. I'm sending you blessings. Boom, boom. Like that. You know, but yeah, also, I lost it. It wasn't just my job. I lost my job. I lost my wife. I lost my stuff. I lost my... Yeah, because people, you know, that TV is powerful, bro. So it's like, but you, I come, I come from, I come from coming from nothing. So it's like, it's really nothing to me. I built, I built a lot of things. I'm good. It's like, I didn't fall on the ground. You know, so it's like I'm like I'm I'm coming back with things that I want to do in life and still got things that I want to do. I'm still talking to big dogs that never left me. You know, they they knew it. They knew the whole time. I was like, you just made a mistake. Like we all do it, but you did it in the lights, nigga. Like I'm like, oh. so you know, it is what it is. So, how how long were you and Toya married? Five years. You married for five years. Yeah, yeah. No children together. No. No, we was we was talk we we was talking about it. We were talking about it. She really wanted a child, but I was like, I still I was so I was such in a rebuilding phase that I couldn't even think about a kid at the time. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was like, she, you know, and then it's like she had a and I and I, and I kind of started getting a little resentful at home because I was just like, I started getting resentful because I was like, sometimes I would come home and she would be watching Love and Hip Hop, and I would be like, so the same show that I told that ruined my life that had part in doing this to me. You, you, and you told me I couldn't go on there to defend myself, but you're laughing. I, I come in the house and you're watching it laughing and I'm about like, this guy, this guy. And I'm sitting there going like, you, you didn't let me go defend myself. You didn't, you didn't come with me to defend me. Like, I feel like as my queen, you're supposed to be like, let's go. Like, you're not about to say that about my husband and just get away with it. Not that she wasn't defending me in the streets, but on the platform that I needed it to be done on, it just wasn't. So I, was, I just was getting resentful at home. I moved out. I had my own place. And everybody was like, how you in a house with your wife, but you also got a place somewhere else? And I just was, I was like, 
I had lost my uh, defense mechanism or something. I'm like, you didn't really defend me. So I'm, you know, I feel like you, you know, this ain't gonna work out. Like, and that's what kind of happened. I kind of like, I was like, I want to go to LA and start over. And she's like, I just, I'm gonna stay here in Atlanta. And I was like, all right, we can do that. And it was kind of like that. It was like a peaceful, it was peaceful. We didn't really have no crazy divorce. It was kind of like, and then after the marriage boot camp thing, I just, I just didn't feel like, even though she stayed with me there, she stayed with me through the through the lie detector test and everybody saw that I passed the lie detector test and everybody was like, wow, he passed the lie detector. So all this happened to this man and he really didn't do that stuff. And I was like, you know what? At this point, I'm like, I'm gone. I don't even wanna, this was a lot. This was a lot for mm -hmm. one bad mistake that I made, a bad decision that I made. This was a lot. And I just wanted to walk away. So I walked away and we. she ended up filing for divorce. I accepted, I knew it was coming. I just was gone. Mentally, I was gone. Emotionally, I was gone. Like, I was like, you know how many people turned their backs on me, bro? I was like, what the? Really? Y'all been running. Y'all been hanging with me. Y'all know me. Y'all see how I am around lady people, right? Y'all see how I am around ladies. Y'all know that ain't, you ain't never seen me be aggressive to, like, all this, like, really? Like, of course, I'm always going to have a girl mad at me for something because I'm that, you know, I, I, I'm i always in a relationship with somebody or, or dating somebody. Yeah, you're always going to be mad because I'm a, I'm just flat out. I'm a ladies man. I'm a lover boy boss. I ain't no fucking, I ain't, you know, I'm a lover boy. Like, you're going to always be mad at me for something. I'm sorry. But it ain't evil. So it is what it is. Like, that's what it do. Like, I know now, don't ever, I'm, I will never intertwine my business with my relationships again. Like, that's that was crazy. That was so wild and crazy. Like, I wish I could go back to myself then. I would slap the fire to myself right before I made that decision. Like, are you crazy? Do you know what you're about to do, man? Like, I wish I could do that, but I can't do that. So the only thing for me to do is keep going. And, and keep my, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So war wounds, baby. It's all you right. can do. Yeah, I ain't gone nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't gone. I just got to have to regroup, you know? In, in terms of uh, your ex-wife, Toya, because you yeah. speak very highly of her. It's, oh, it yeah, does seem right. like yeah. you, you feel a way, and I can understand it, that um you weren't allowed to go on Love and Hip Hop. But overall, just listening to the the tone in your voice and, and how you were and things, yeah. uh, you still have a lot of respect for that woman. Oh, yeah. I, I know that she has recently either gotten engaged or um I don't know if she's married. Oh, she's married. You, she married, got a kid, all that, which I'm blessings to her too. Like it had to happen. It had to happen. Like, you know, she okay, so do do you feel like she's the one that got away, or or do you think even now you made the right decision in letting that relationship kind of crumble? Um, she's definitely the one that got away, but I made a decision so bad right before I met her that it was coming into the marriage. I didn't I didn't realize it was coming, but when it came, I was like, how could it not come? It's coming. Like I got this ex, I got, she knew it was coming. I was like, I got this ex relationship. I'm like, I'm, she, she coming, she's coming. Like she is coming. She, she, she already threatened. She already had a, a, a accused me of cheating on you, cheating on her with you. When I was, she just catch me watching Tiny and Toya by myself. She's like, what's a grown man doing watching Tiny and Toya by himself? Like, I was like, I'm just looking, you know? So she was already, it was already a thing there. So to get, actually marry you. Yeah, she coming. <clears throat> It was so, you know, whatever. One time I, <laughs> uh, one time I was in the house, I mean, we was in the house and I heard a brick hit the window and Toya sleep and I get out the window and I'm like, I'm I'm looking at K. Michelle run across the street and jump in the car. She had just bricked my house and jumps in the car with her friends. And I didn't even tell you. Toya was like, what? Toya like, what was that sound? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> just like, it's outside throwing stuff. So I'm hit the, but I saw her. Like, it was like, it was so funny, bro. I, it was really a funny time, but it was like it, it was it wasn't good for me. It wasn't good for me. But I had funny nah, moments. You know, I, I, I saw it was like thin line between love and hate. Remember how <laughs> that was me. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I actually saw you on an episode of um Ayanga. Oh yeah, Fixed yeah, yeah. Life. Um yo, and you really look like you was in some pain. Yeah, oh. just stuff from my from from my family, from stuff from my past with my dad, the way my dad was killed. This is like my story is just weird and crazy, but I know it's all for the good. It's all all these war wounds got to be adding up for something right now, you know. So that's what I look at it like, you know, you know. So coming from my dad being murdered by by a KKK member that was an informant, chopped up, 
burned, never getting, never. We don't have a funeral for my oh, dad. Oh, hold, hold on, so, so, slow down. I, your your dad. I knew he was murdered. I didn't know mm-hmm. how. Yeah, he was, a, he was a zoning zoning officer, and he walked in on a gun deal. I guess going bad, and he was just coming there to, to serve papers for a zoning situation, and he didn't. They didn't let him leave, and it came out that uh, we could never we couldn't find the body, and that's when we found out that it was because he was dismembered and uh, burned. So, uh, so I mean, that guy, you know, he's in prison for you know prison for the rest of his life, but. My mom is uh, fixing up the properties that he used to live in because we were awarded all this property. So my mom is like, you know, my mom is remarried, of course, but now she's like fixing up the property and it's about this, you know, it's Airbnbs now. It's like a whole little family business we have going on where we rent out the the houses, we redid them and everything. So, so yeah. So coming from Memphis, that was the fire I came to New York with. That, that happened to me before I moved to New York. So coming to New York at 20 years old and all that fire and all those things I did and I couldn't. It was, it, I was being driven by that, but to be able to slow down and then here comes the divorce, here comes the, here comes the, um, the scandal, here comes all these things and all the success. And I just like, I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I don't even have the energy for all that no more. I'm like, now you're sitting here talking to Mickey Wright again. Like, you know, I'm still, I'm still Memphis hits, but I know how to take the Memphis hits jacket off. At first I never knew how to take the Memphis hits jacket off and be Mickey Wright sometimes. And it's like, now I can... I can take the Memphis Hits jacket off when it's time for him. I'll I'll zip it on and be Memphis Hits for everybody. And this lively A and R character that's that's on TV and do these things, and I can do that. But then I have to be Mickey Wright, this dad now and a family man, and you know, like you know, I got bigger dreams. I got bigger things on my mind these days. And I, and I can look at my war wounds and say those were decisions. Those are the those are the war wounds of decisions that I made as a as a as a young guy. You know, and it's yeah, cool. I mean- it ain't cool, but it's cool. I get it. That that is your story. It, unfortunately, it's it's all too common. Um, yeah. it, it comes in different shapes. It comes in different sizes and different scenarios. But navigating success um, for anybody who's ever achieved a level of success, navigating going from nothing to now having money to now being that person that everybody's looking to, to solve their problems within your family, um, being in relationships, still being a young man or a young woman with the spotlight on it. That's not easy. Not it ain't easy. Easy. So I understand everything that you have been talking to me about today. And I understand even now you could say, yo, Sean, you know what? I know how to take off the Memph hits hat yeah. right now. You're talking to Mickey, Wright, exactly. And that that's maturity. Yeah. That that's yeah. experience. And sometimes experience comes through, comes through hard knocks. It comes through, yeah. through hard lessons learned. Yeah. Everybody I look up to, everybody I look side, up to is, yeah. Everybody I look up to have their hard knock story. I remember one time Puff told me, he's like, you, he's like, he's like, you, when Puff started taking me in, Puff told me one time, he was like, he used to take me places and stuff. And he was like, you ain't been through nothing yet. And I was like, huh? It's true. He's like, he like, like, you winning. He's like, you winning. He's like, yeah, you winning. You, he's like, you remind me of me. He's like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, but he's like you, ain't went, you ain't been through nothing yet, though. He's like, you, he's like, you'll be one of us when you get back from what you got to go through. And I was like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm not going through none but these hits, baby. That's that like, wisdom. Okay. That's yeah. wisdom talking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he told me. That he said, "When I get back from whatever I'm about to go through, then you, then you're one of us." And I was like, "I never knew what he was talking about until it hit me." I was like, "It's like I got so many stories to tell that man when I get back to him." You know what I'm saying? He told me this was gonna happen. Nah, it, 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 again, it's all too common. It's all too familiar. Um, oh yeah. <clears throat> and here's the deal: before we move this conversation forward, you know, it didn't break you. You you might you might have bent, um, you might have been been forced to your knees, but to still be here to still talk about it to still have a a a, a perspective on the future, yeah, uh, and not allowing your future to be predicated on your past, man. Exactly. It, you know, God is good. Exactly. Um, okay, so so you're back in Memphis now. Yes. I, <laughs> What is going is 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 hot, and and that's the best way I could put because Memphis is on fire right now. It's on Memphis fire. Yes, on fire. We got a. What F-Y-E is it about that place 
because it's so violent. I mean, I know you lived in Atlanta. Um, you're originally from Memphis, but we lost Dolph last year. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I'm like, you know, what is it about that place that seems to to be so damn violent, especially toward its own? Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, man. It's like we, it's like a, uh, it's like we so over, we feel so overlooked at times, and it's like we super emotional here. It's like super, it's like southern southern hospitality that can go wrong in two seconds. You know, it's like a, um, I don't know, man. I hate, I hate to. Cause I love Dolph. I love, I love all these artists here, but it's like, sometimes it's like these gangsters not playing with you. Like you, like you can't just Memphis ain't the place you can say something on a record and think you can walk around too. Like it ain't that kind of place. It's too emotional for that. Like if you say something, you say you're going to do something to me. Like I got to believe you now. I'm now I'm on the guard too. Now I'm on guard. Like you, you serious. Like I'm, I'm not playing with you. Cause I know you're not, I know you're not playing with me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's one, of those, it's one of those places, man. It's like everybody, every place has their place like that. And it's like, whether you're famous or not, you got to watch your mouth. You got to watch what you say. You got, you never know who you're talking to. It's one of the places you really have to weave through and know, have a street mentality to know you just ain't, you just can't. I, I would say even coming here, honking your horn too crazy. Like, you know, in New York, you, you're in traffic and them, them, honk, them honking the horn. Ah, go, nigga. Ah, 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 ah. You don't want to just do that here. Like that ain't they, they take it, they taking that a little more personal than you might be thinking they're taking that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, when I come home, I tell people, you know, I have to I have to de New York when I come home. Like you gotta get that out that, that, that you, know, you know, fuck out of here. Ain't the same fuck out of here as it is in New York that it is here. I can I say fuck out of here to somebody in New York, they just gonna say it back to me. Fuck out, you fuck out of here. Here in Memphis, that's like fuck out. Uh, what? What you saying? Mm -hmm. Like you want me to die? Like you, it's just it's just different. That's like it's but at the same time, it, it's it's you know it's a cool place, but it's not to be played with. I would say that it's it's, it's the the emotion level is too high here to to be in the streets doing just being just frivolous with your with your talk with your tongue. You know, that's all you know, it is. Speaking of the emotional level being too high, mm -hmm. the, the whole country. Forget about. I, I understand um, your city. Exactly. But the whole country was affected by Tyree Nichols. Oh my God. And yeah. you know, how how are you guys doing down there? And is, you know, and, and it was so sad because that was a black man and those were black officers. Black officers, yeah. I'm in I'm actually embarrassed by it. Uh, I don't know how nobody else is taking it, but not only am I embarrassed that it was my city, I'm embarrassed that they were black officers. I'm just embarrassed. I'm like. As much as we go through already with the police, all the stuff we've been through in the last couple years with the police, and and for the, for them to be black and for and the rumors going around for this to be uh, geared, you know, be happening behind some woman, you know, they, you saw the officer taking pictures of Ty, Tyree, sending them to his to his baby mama, like like all the tender dick shit going on, like that's bro, you you come on, bro. Like I'm literally embarrassed, and I and I the condolences to the Tyree Nichols family. Like we just had a stop the violence uh, thing out here. My homegirl um, Ladia Yates threw a stop the violence thing uh, dance dance uh, talent show the other day, and it was um, amazing. But it was in in memory of Tyree Nichols, and we just people just we just been doing a lot of things around the city to try to make it better. But I I'll tell you personally, if, if I'm not alone, uh, or if even if I am alone, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that that happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm embarrassed that it happened, period. If it had happened in Colorado and they were black officers, I would have been mad, even if they were white officers. But the fact that it's my city and they were black, like I just don't, it, it kind of loosens my faith even more in, in the police system, like especially in black officers. Like I don't want to do that because all of them are not bad, but something like this is such bad representation for them that it's like, I can't even look them in the eyes right now, you know? But How's yeah. your city healing since then? Does, does it feel like it's, it's, it's coming back together? I feel, like, I feel like I feel like it's I feel like it's it's coming around, but you never you never know. One little thing could set it off again, you know. One little thing could set the whole city off again. Like now, the thing with job ja, with John ja and, and, and the NBA and the Grizzlies, like with the gun. You no, know, like, I, I was just about to go there. What like you you talking about one little thing? The, the star it, of your NBA team, Jay Moran. Yeah. What like, it's like you gotta walk around with guns? Like it's the culture of the city. It's like uh it's not all bad like that. It's not all like that, but for the most part, 
it's a lot of gunplay here. It's a lot of gunplay. You got to watch where you are. You got to keep your head on a swivel at all times. And you got to know how to move here. But the culture of the city is gangster. It's pretty gangster, you know? Yeah, but but here's the deal. You know, yeah. he's somebody. Yeah, you don't, don't even really have to do that. You exactly. Do that. Yeah, you don't have to do that. That, but, that, that guy's a multimillionaire. Yeah. And he, he is a celebrity in his own right. He made it out. He made it out. He made That's it out. That's why I'm wondering. Like, I like I don't I, I don't I don't really understand. I never understood that. Like when I get when I got out, when I finally got out of the hood and I got out of situations that I don't have to be in no more. Like I, I hated those situations. I hated gunplay. I hated robbery situations. I hated fights. I hate and when I get when I get to a certain level, you ain't you you I'm sorry, you ain't gonna see me like that no more in certain places. You're just not gonna see me. I know how it works. Like, yeah, I'm you you hustling with me today, but as soon as I make it, I'm on the other side of the of the menu, nigga. Like, like niggas don't know that. Like, you hustling like in the streets. We on the same. We we look right. at food. You made the food. I make it, nigga. Inevitably, now you the food. You the food. I don't care. You now you on the other side of the menu. Like, so I move like I know I'm food. I'm not, I'm food. I'm not about to be there with you. Like, nigga, nigga. I walk in. Niggas looking at me like. The, get him get him <laughs> no nigga no my, i wasn't even there for you to even have to have that thought my nigga. i wasn't even there so i ain't gonna mess with your brain like that I, I'm, I'm probably i probably ain't coming to that like don't even invite me to that i ain't coming to that like you're crazy like but if some people want to be in it it's like you get the money yeah, and you want to now you want to be in it you it's so it's backwards to me you get the money and now you want to be that you want to be in this like i don't I don't get that. That's how I be knowing when niggas ain't really from where I'm from, like, because I'm trying to get over. I want us. I want to be in. I want to be in Bali, waving the niggas like I made it to Bali, nigga. Like I'm That's not. Right. I'm not trying to brag. My bragging is not. I was in the most gangster club that you can find, and I got all this money. Like, what am I trying to prove that I'm Superman or something? Like, you ain't Superman, nigga. When them bullets get to flying, trust me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna tell you something, um. We, we spent the better part of this conversation and you were talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the struggles and, and the different things that you went through at the height yes. of your career that really brought you back down to earth. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these things happen to us for a reason. And, you know, I, even me and you speaking about Jay Morant right now, he could really benefit from your story. Understanding yeah. how even earlier you said um, decisions. Yeah. The, the, the people don't understand the power, the, the power in a decision for, for better or for worse. It's coming. If you make one wrong decision or if yeah. you make a right decision, it could be right could decision. You're good. Yeah. Alter your life forever. forever. Either which way. So I wish that that you know. I hope maybe off record one day you two get to meet and you get to chop it and say, "Yo, look, I love meeting. yeah, 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 yeah." Because because what he doesn't realize, it's it's people, his his parents, um, agents, friends, aunties. It's a lot of people who are now either eating off of of him or being supported by him, or he's just the success story that gives them hope. Yeah. And, and, and if he throws all that away, so many of the people's hopes, their dreams, it goes with him. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I feel for that young brother and I hope he gets it together and I hope he gets some dudes in his corner to, to help him. You made it out. Like you and I feel like I feel like when God when and you he got God given talent. When you when God give you a talent, like certain stuff, like like you saying my my moving through that that wasn't just me. The way I moved through the game, that was that was God leading me. He knew I was on a, a on this path. He's like leading. Me. So when He gives you a gift, and He rewards you for that gift, when you your decisions now are stronger than you think they are. When you make a decision, He's looking at you like, and I gave you all of this. I, I gave you that gift to be able to do this. Now, here go these decisions. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna, you're not gonna make good decisions all the time, but there's gonna be some big ones. The decision you make, 
I'm, it's coming. Whatever you did, it's coming. So it's like, you know, you just you gotta learn from it. So it's basically like your, your decisions are more sensitive when you have God given gifts and talents, you know? So I feel like he has a God given talent. So his decision, every decision he makes matters to so many people and himself. So I think he definitely needs to get people around him that, that understands that as well. Like, can't you just can't do no anything. You're not one of us. You can't do that. No, you, know? you can't. Yes. Yeah. You can't. So, Those are yes. some powerful I wish I had, I wish I had you know, I wish I had more people around me when I was like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like I said, I can't even say that. Because people were telling me not to do that. So I just didn't listen. I didn't listen. I was a person that didn't listen. So yeah, you get spanks spankings for that. You know, so take your spanking and get back in there. You know what I'm saying? It ain't over. Don't don't be one of them niggas that be like, oh, they spanked me, it's over. I ain't gonna never be nothing. Ah. No, nigga, take learn how to take your spanking and get out and get back out there. Get back in the game. That's Straight right. Up. Don't do it again. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna the spanking the next time gonna be a bigger spanking. You want another, you want a bigger one? Because them spankings don't stop. But the bad decision making can stop. There you go. There yeah. you go. Okay, yeah. before I let you up out of here. You started off talking about your new ventures. Yes. Enlighten, enlighten us once again. What can we expect? Like, like for everybody who's following you, rooting for you, and, yes. and you know, listening, just got through listening to your story. Like, yo, I want the best for this brother because he's no different than me. We done all been through something. We done all been hard headed, made bad decisions. And here it is, you you you're about to do it all again. What yes. what, what is it that we can look forward to seeing from, from Mickey Wright? Not Mickey. Mickey Wright. Yeah, yeah. Right now, Mickey Wright is working on, like, I've always been a creator. So I, I, I got a couple of inventions that I've been working on. I got this new company called Creative Juice LLC. Um, possibly about to be working with Carmelo. Uh, Carmelo reached out to me and well, his people reached out to me and he told me what they he had just invested in this tech company. So I got a couple ideas I sent over there. They hit me back about a couple of them. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. I got a new TV show that I'm working on. Uh, my boy Mark Spark told me to holler, tell you what's up. Cause I'm, I'm working uh, with him. Oh yeah, yeah. He said he, he loving what you're doing. He said he see you. So he told me to tell you what's up. So, but he told me, do not talk about the show that we about to do. So I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, <laughs> okay. So, I, so I'm doing some TV stuff, not on the show, but I'm behind the scenes creating and, I, you know, doing my own thing with that. And of course the music, I, I just started this uh, label, the sound mob. I'm uh, trying to put put a little R uh, 2023 2024 R and B vibe uh, group together, you know, some from some stuff that I love. Uh, three girls that I that I met out here that I'm going to fat talent talent shows again, finding talent at talent shows. I'm just getting back into the fun of where I was when I first started. Like I'm back to the basics, like having like having fun, and I'm I'm loving this new place I'm working at. If anybody out there needs distribution for their records, if you've been doing your work, or if you're just talented, or you know somebody talented, hit me up. Uh, Memphis hits at beatroot.com, uh, B E A T R O O T. Uh, it's made in Memphis uh, Entertainment. And uh, like I said, I work for Mr. David Porter, legendary Hall of Fame writer out of Memphis, Tennessee, Stax Records, Isaac Hayes, the whole shit, bang, bang. And uh, I'm just back, I'm just back having fun. So that's what I'm doing. Everything I'm doing got, got, got a little fun in it now. And it's, it's back to, it's, I'm seeing it from a different perspective now. So everything I'm doing now is not all music, but music will always be incorporated in my new ventures. That's what I'm doing, man. And being a great dad and being a, um, possibly being a great husband one of these days after I figure I, this love thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it, I'm going to let it alone for one second. <laughs> Well, leave it alone. I gotta do my. I gotta get a little. I gotta need some help. I need a. I need a. I need a marriage mentor before I can do that again. So I'm always gonna be looking for Mrs. Wright, you know. But other than that, I'm just. I just. I feel. I feel like a uh, God giving me a second chance, and everything that I'm touching now may it turn into gold. You know. I, I pray more now, and I know that he's. I know that he's in front of me now this time. You know. I know. I know who helped me through that first time, and that's like now I gotta respect my respect him enough to make great decisions for the things that he's given me and the, and the, the creativity that he still lets run through my brain, you know? So that's what I'm doing these days. More hands-on. I'm actually even producing tracks now myself. Like instead of just, I used to orchestrate everything. Now I'm actually a part of my own production team. So I'm doing tracks. Anybody need tracks? I got a whole production team, sound mob. We do tracks, 
we do music, we write, we doing all that stuff via beat root music. So, um, you know, that's what I'm doing, man. You know, if, if you fuck it with me, come tune in with your boy, come, come get with me. Cause I'm on to greatness and I'm going to stay on that. And, uh, all you pretty ladies stay away from me. Cause anybody got time for that. <laughs> Well, I would tell you, my brother, like, it, it has been my pleasure sitting down, speaking with you. Um, you know, I love I love that that you're incorporating God yeah. into, into this journey and understanding that all that you've been through, God never left your side. And that, and that is so important uh, for anybody who's going through anything. Even when you think he, even when you think he's gone, he's, he's still right there. Even when you smacking stuff against the wall and mad and like, ah, I'm doing this to me. He's still sitting right there. Like, that's why I call myself God's kid. Cause it's like, I treat him like, like he is my dad. Like he's not my, my earth dad, but he's, I treat him like my dad. I got God's kid everywhere. That's my brand. And it's like, no matter how old you are or how, how smart you think you are to him, you, man, you're nothing more than a kid. I even write God's kid. I write it like the kid part, like a little, like a kid would, you know, like, you know how those letters look. That's, I feel like that's how we write to him in real life. Like that's, we think we're doing big things. Even a nigga that invited and invented the, the airplane to God, you're still a kid, bro. That's it. That's still, it. So, so, be, so be that. So be that. Have fun like a kid. Learn like a kid. Make your mistakes like a kid. Get up. Like get back in the game. Like you, you, you're never going to get past being a kid to that man, you know? So have fun. No, we are all his children, and I'm so happy that you you have that perspective. Um, but Memph, is, again, it's my pleasure, man. Uh, keep up the great work. I'm Thank you, bro. Same to you. Things from you. Yes, sir. I, you know I'm gonna call you when they popping, popping by. <laughs> my brother, my brother, my dog. You already know it is. Hits committed for life, partner. Yeah. All right, son. One love. One love, my dog. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.